Chances are you clicked on this video because you have a lot of this laying around. A bunch of low-end cars that you have no idea how to get rid of. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use eBay standard envelope to kind of move some of this stuff, some of the stale inventory, collecting dust, and get a little bit extra money in your pocket. So let's get right into this. You might be asking yourself, what is eBay standard envelope? Basically, it's a shipping service that eBay provides to its sellers to be able to sell trading cards under $20. So instead of using uh, USPS stamps when you're sending a plain white envelope, you would use the shipping label that eBay provides to you. And the whole idea behind that is you can track where the, the shipment is going to. It doesn't work the best, but the idea behind it is pretty good. But the main thing you're going to use this service for is to sell those cheap cards. And let's get right into how you actually use it. Before I show you how to actually ship a card using the service, I just want to quickly go over some things that, that you should keep in mind when you're actually selling those cards on eBay. So eBay charges a flat fee on the shipping cost for the shipping label. So there's three different types. So if, you're, if your card weighs one ounce, it's going to cost 63 cents to ship it. If it weighs two ounces, it's going to cost 87 cents to ship it. And if it costs three ounces, it's going to cost $1.11 uh, to ship the card. Now, if it weighs anything over than three ounces, basically it's going to get sent back it won't get delivered to the customer so make sure to keep that in mind and also i just want to say this might be different for a lot of people but for me personally i don't list cars that are under two dollars free shipping so the reason for that is because let me do some quick math on you guys uh if i sell a car for a dollar fifty free shipping right ebay takes a flat fee of 13 percent on any sale that you make so multiply a dollar fifty times 0.13 you're going to have 20 cents in fees and now if you take into account what it costs to ship a card so let's say the card weighs one ounce it's going to be 63 cents to ship that card 63 plus 20 you subtract that from a dollar 50 and now your dollar 50 sale on ebay is only 67 cents in that uh you know what you netted now if you do the same math with the two dollar minimum that i do you would net a dollar 11 cents so it's not not better but at least you're making over a dollar on the sale instead of you were only making 60 cents if you sold the car for a dollar 50. all right guys so this is what i use when i do end up shipping ebay standard envelope you're gonna need one of these label printers you can use a printer regular printer as long as you can print four by six labels uh you're pretty much set then we have right here this uh just this kitchen scale so this is going to be used to actually weigh out the packages to make sure you're under the three ounces then you're going to need some painter's tape. Uh, this is what I use uniquely. This is cardstock. It's four by six. So I use it to kind of sandwich the card in between here. It fits perfectly into the envelope as well. Uh, so that's what I kind of use for protection. And then I do just use these plain white envelopes. You don't need to get really fancy with this. Um, these are pretty cheap. You can go to Dollar Tree, to Target. You can get them for like three bucks for like a pack of 80. Uh, you don't need to buy the more expensive stuff. I know a lot of uh, youtubers out there tell you to buy the more sturdy kind of envelopes i find that it makes no difference you're just spending more money uh and in turn you can use that extra money you know put in your pocket essentially and then next thing the last thing is that you use this pen to mark down what card i just packaged up if you end up packaging up like 15 to 20 cards in one session you want to know which one uh you're right you know you you're putting the label onto so you don't get them mixed up so let me show you guys how i actually package the card up so i'm gonna use this robert williams for an example that i ended up selling on ebay so what i do I take my painter's tape and i just take up a little bit of slit right here so this much and then all i do is take off some of this and put it right over the top loader so it won't move this is all you need i know some people like overdo and they package the whole thing up like yeah you could do that but you're ending up wasting more painter's tape than you need then i just take the card stock also you can just use um index cards if you find them at the store it works perfectly fine the same but these are a little bit more sturdy so that's why i use them and then i take the rest of this remaining tape i just put it right here and then i take my envelope i stick it in here and then the key thing is to make sure this excess tape is uh you know pressed firmly into the envelope so it won't move the card won't move um and it's perfectly fine when you know it is in the mail so this is where your kitchen scale comes into to uh play um, once you you know end up sending like over a thousand of these uh envelopes you, you'll know what uh package weighs so you don't have to use this all the time 
put it there. You can see it's less than one ounce, so we're perfectly fine. And then I would just put on the label right here, but if you're doing more, I would want to put like Robert Williams. So I'll put like Williams right here in the corner. So I know that this is Robert Williams. And then I just take the correct uh, shipping label and I just put it on here. So that's that simple. Um, it should take you less than a minute once you have the label printed out and you kind of get the hang of this book. That's how I do it. A lot of people do it differently. Now I just kind of want to go over some of the pros and cons that I've noticed after doing eBay standard envelope for the past year. Starting out with some of the pros, using eBay standard envelope is going to improve the amount of people that actually come onto your page. You know, once you have more listings, people are going to click on your, you know, your seller's p uh, page. Another thing is the more, you know, you're selling more cards, it's going to lead to more feedback, positive feedback hitting your eBay page as well. So it's going to go up. And then another one is you're going to gain more frequent buyers, right? They're going to have repeat buyers. They're going to follow your page. They're going to send you offers when you, uh, you know, upload new cards every day. So that's a huge plus. You can move inventory consistently. And the last one, it's the most efficient way to sell low end cards year round. So you don't have to wait until you, there's a local show to set up at and you can set up your value boxes there. You can just post them on eBay and they'll sell whenever they sell, right? All right, so let's get into some of the cons and the cons are a little bit, you know, off-putting for a lot of people. So in the past year that I've done eBay standard envelope, I've received tons of returns. Well, not essentially returns. It's a lot of more people uh, complaining about the conditions of cards. You know, they're lower end cards, so I don't really, you know, pay attention to what kind of condition they're in. And then also a lot of people claiming that their packages never arrived. Now, that can be a, a deal breaker to a lot of people. You got to refund people, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And I'll get into that in shortly. Um, another thing is you have a higher possibility of having negative feedback uh, affect your page. So the more cards you sell, the lower end cards, you know, just how I mentioned beforehand, like people, they want their cards to be pristine. Even if they spend like two, three dollars on a card, they still don't want it to be, you know, in a in horrible condition. Right. So. Sometimes it's going to lead to unhappy buyers and they're just going to leave negative feedback to you. Thankfully, in the past year that I've done it, I've only had a handful of occasions where I have uh, had some negative feedback or some like neutral feedback. And then the last con is sales can be a little slow at times. So cards can end up sitting on your page for weeks, months, maybe even a year. I, I know I have some cards that have been sitting on my page for a year that I kind of took down and I'm like, you know, what do I do with them? But they're be it's better than not having them listed and having them collect dust. At least when someone comes around it, they'll end up purchasing it and it you'll be thankful that you actually had it listed, right? As for some tips and tricks when using eBay standard envelope, uh, to lead off from that last point, a big one that I always like to tell people is to make sure all your listings are promoted. So eBay allows you to do promotions. Basically, they promote it to whenever someone looks up a card, it'll usually be on the top of the page. Um, you don't have to go super crazy with this. 2% is the minimum, and that's what I use for all my cards. And you only get charged the fee if someone buys it from that link. So if your card is uh, promoted and someone clicks on it and they buy it from there, that's when eBay will charge you the fee. But usually it doesn't happen too often, uh, but it does lead to more people going onto your page and more people seeing your cards. This is a pretty useful tip for a lot of people and I haven't seen a lot of people actually talk about it. So let's say someone says their package never got, uh, you know, delivered. All you would have to do is refund them, but to actually get your money back from that refund, I'm going to leave the link in the, in the description below. You fill out that form, you put in whatever it asks for. It usually takes like two to three minutes. Make sure your PayPal email is correct. Literally 24 hours later, they send you what you refunded the customer back to you. So it's like you never lost any money. Um, and there's nothing on you as well. So it's usually if like a package gets lost and never gets delivered, it's usually on USPS's fault, right? So at least eBay does give out that insurance. So it's not your fault. You at least package the card up, you sent it out and it never got delivered. So they give that uh, extra layer of protection when you're selling these lower end cards. Another tip I would have for you guys is to make sure you list cards every day. Uh, make it a habit, make it a point. It's like, if you were going to the gym every single day, make, you know, be consistent with it. Usually I, myself, I like to list around 20 cards a day. You don't have to do that though. You can put like five, 10, 15, whatever it is. 
and eBay see, sees this and they think you're pretty consistent, they'll start promoting your page a little bit more and it leads to more sales. Something that I was experimenting with uh, very recently is offering store-wide sales. So you can do things like offering 25% off any orders with three or more items. And I found that that really helps a lot of people go onto my page and they end up buying a ton of more cards than they might have, right? There's tons of different other things that you can do. You can offer like 25% off any single item and I did that too and I, I did pretty good numbers with this. So if you're into those cards for cheap and you don't mind uh, giving out some deals for people, you can kind of do that as well. If you've watched this video and you're like, you know, I don't really want to do eBay standard envelope kind of seems like a lot of work. I mean, it is, but you can try setting up at shows and having value boxes there. And, you know, I know in the past that I've done it. It's been pretty successful for me. The only thing is there's no consistency in sh having shows every week. Another thing is you can move your cards on social media. So you can do like stack sales on Twitter. Basically, just list the cards up. People build stacks. And if you do it consistently for like a week's period, I know I did one like last month and it did it pretty good. I sold like over $400 worth in cards. You can make pretty good money. The only downside is you do have to have a like a sort of a, a following on Twitter or whatever social media you actually want to do it on. And then for the last resort, if you don't want to do any type of sort of work, you can just sell like a whole box to a lot of people because they would be willing to do the work for you. As long as it's not like any base and it's good stuff, they'll buy it. As far as eBay, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them if I didn't hit them in this video. Make sure to give this video a like and make sure to hit that subscription button. As I said in the last video, I'm going to start making more content and I am trying to be a little bit more unique in what I do. So it won't just be show videos. It'll be you know, different challenges or informational videos that I can kind of put out there to help you guys out as well. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Deuces.